So a video like this, well, this is going to be, I'm just going to jump to the chase here. This is going to be a more edgier, this is going to be one of the, the more risky ones. And I've enlisted uh, the help of my good friend, Jay, uh, Degenerate Jay. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me here. I'm very known for being edgy. Uh, anytime <laughs> there's a Sonic game, I pick Shadow the Hedgehog. So this is the perfect video for me. Oh my God, we found the right guy. So we're, we're going to lay into this. Now we are definitely going to have to be careful for a lot of different reasons uh, of how we say this. But no, you know, at the time you guys are seeing this about maybe like a week ago, the Batman, okay, the movie got delayed again. That's really what sparked just a lot of anger in me. I know James Bond was obviously, you know, the No Time to Die. That was a major, in fact, that is like the major, uh, you know, domino that at, at this point has just destroyed, uh, the, you know, the movie industry. So Jay and I are going to have a back and forth talk and just talk about, you know, are movie theaters doomed? Are they going down? Will they ever recover? And we've actually talked about this on Twitter before. And I guess before I jump too far into this, don't forget, obviously support Jay. All his stuff is going to be in the description pin comment he's got his main channel second channel twitter my stuff obviously as well again all that stuff's in the description and if you guys like by the way these more edgy videos i've definitely been uh jumping in them a whole lot more often and with two channels i'm able to do it uh double as much so i'm definitely willing to do this look we're not going to downplay you know what's going on around the world and we're not going to say the word just be you know for safety's sake i guess um but you know i guess uh, you know I'll jay's our guest so it's probably the proper thing for me to do jay we've had this discussion on Twitter before, and I think we're both, you know, I think we probably do differ a little bit in our thoughts, but I think we're both in the general camp of, you know, these movie, like, this is a bad thing. These movie theaters may not survive this, you know, at the end of the day. This is not a, you know, a good thing in general, and there's a lot of, and, you know, I've even said it, really, the little guys, the workers at movie theaters, I mean, these are the people that are being hurt. Hollywood elite, I mean, they're over there telling you who to vote for. They're completely fine. You don't see them, by the way, donating to these movie theaters to keep them open. They're fine. It's everybody else that's being hurt. So, what do you think about, the, you know, the general landscape? I know you saw the New Mutants in theaters, right? I haven't gone back to theaters since early March. I actually really want to. There's just been nothing that's gotten me. I was going to go see James Bond. I would have seen Wonder Woman. I would have seen that God in June. I honestly would have because I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not as afraid as maybe other people are. Uh, so what do you think about what's going on? Well, one, I'm surprised you didn't see Tenet because I haven't gotten to that either, but I, I thought you would have seen that. Um, I thought I would have seen that too. <laughs> uh, but I do want to say here, I, I should offer a disclaimer. I think opinions make people mad. It's 2020. Uh, I don't get it. I don't really care, but it does seem to piss people off. I speak for myself. I know I'm on Alex's channel for this, uh, but anything I say here, if you have any problem with it, you can levy it back to me or my channel. I really could care less. Um, Alex does not share all of my views and you know, this is me. Um, I'm really tired of this whole thing. And what I mean by that is that I do think people need to be smart and safe. But the fact that we have really tanked our economy completely on this is a joke. Uh, Europe was able to get away without doing that for the most part. And a lot of European countries actually left most things open and they were just safe and not complete idiots. Um, and they were able to go about their business. Uh, interestingly, <laughs> the first time I talked about the thing that, ha that we're coining, you coined the phrase, the thing that's happening around the world, mm -hmm. um, which if you don't know, involves, you know, coughing. Um, <laughs> that thing, uh, the first time it entered the United States, it was handled horribly already. It swept through nursing homes and all kinds of stuff like that. People did die. Um, and then we sort of went this complete other direction of shut everything down uh, don't leave your home, any of this stuff. And then our economy tanked and movies were hit hard with that too. Now I have seen a lot of, a lot of statements like, well, right now it's not the time for movies and entertainment and stuff like that. Um, I think that's very misguided. And I'm going to get into that a little bit because we have had massive actually issues like this in the past um, where things have gone around that have had a lot of people uh, deleted <laughs> I'm, I'm picking my words here to very good out, very but, good um things have gone around that have deleted people which really sucks and it's not fair um but we didn't destroy our whole economy over it and so that's sort of what frustrates me is and, and people are going to say well he doesn't have empathy he doesn't understand you know I, I see that a lot if you have any take other than stay in your basement hide lock your doors um, I am at a higher risk for dying from the thing that's going on. Uh, I have a blood condition. Uh, I have a blood disorder. Actually, people with blood disorders are more likely statistically um, to, you know, delete from this. Um, my mom has diabetes and also other risk factors. So it's, it's like this is something I take seriously. If I go out, 
I wear a mask. I am careful. I don't, you know, go make out with anybody and have them breathe into my mouth. Um, there are real things that you need to be careful with. But the thing with these theaters is that I, since I've been back, they have been safer than grocery stores I've been to. I'm not kidding about that, Alex. Like I, I was at a grocery store and you still see people walking around without a mask on. Out, totally. Even in Minnesota. Like I see that um, there's a state mandate. You have to. They don't care. They do it anyway. Um, i would never seen that at the movie theater because they can turn people away at the door. It's very easy because you're just funneled in there. Um, y- y- every seat around you is blocked off. So when I went with Nate, we went to see New Mutants, you would buy two seats, right? The seats uh, on the left and right of you and in front of you blocked off so that there's a six feet gap. So nobody can be within six feet of you at all. Um, and then the theaters are sterilized between showings. This was a safer I would say less uh, prone to contain the thing going on around the world environment than any grocery store I've been to since, since then. Uh, that's what really frustrates me is a lot of people don't know because they're so scared. And I totally get that they're scared, but there's so much in- misinformation with all this stuff going on. Um, and if the movie industry tanks, that's bad for everybody. These things are going to go direct to streaming platforms. We already saw that with Mulan. And I know you and I talked about that tanked. But it still was an attempt. Birds of Prey was immediately rentable for $20 through Amazon Prime right at the beginning of the thing going on. Uh, These companies, if the theater isn't there, they have to compete even less. I'm sorry. I I just completely went on for like three or four minutes there (laughs) without giving you a chance there. But it really frustrates me because... This is removing competition from the entertainment industry, which already suffers from a severe lack of competition. And that is going to hurt everybody in the entertainment industry. It is going to hurt people at home. And people do need entertainment. You know, people will say that's not a necessity. Think about all the people working 50, 60, 70 hour work weeks at what they feel are dead end jobs. They're unhappy. And the thing that they have to look forward to this week is coming home and watching Netflix or or going to a movie or any of this stuff. This keeps people sane. People need this. And, you know, this isn't even wrong to say. Statistically, you have a lot of people that are getting more depressed, a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, doing things to themselves, right? Uh, Actually, at a much higher rate. And that's what happens when you keep everybody inside. So, yeah, I mean, what what Jason said well firstly yeah um if you have a problem with jay maybe just don't attack anybody (laughs) firstly um but yeah he speaks for himself i speak for myself and and, and let me tell you this again you have every you you make your own decisions okay if you don't want to go to the movie theater you don't go that's actually one of the best parts and and i don't get into this stuff too much honestly i I have just as many opinions of this as i do for all the, the 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 10,000 games I cover, um, but this is something that I am very passionate about. And, and look, you have every right to go, just like you have every, every right to stay, just like you have every right to go to work or stay. And that's the biggest thing with uh, this thing is we've handled it wrong. I don't think that's that's wrong to say either. I won't go into you know how we could have done it better. Uh, uh, but here's the deal. Sitting in a movie theater, and like Jace, I mean, there you go. You literally had somebody who was at a movie theater tell you this. Now, I haven't gone, but again, I mean, I've gone to a grocery store. Uh, I'm sure people have gone to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. These places are not the greatest in the world. You have people touching things. Even even I do it. I mean, you know, you look at an onion, okay? You look at a yellow onion. It may not be the greatest yellow onion, but you picked it up. And so, what, do you put it in your bag or do you have to get another one? I mean, you've now just touched those things. Okay, so... At a movie theater, yeah, Jay said it. You're you're very safe there. I think you're very very safe. Actually, in a lot of places, um, that they you know they would make you believe that you're not. You're sitting there. You're staring at a screen. They don't have to do the free popcorn. They have to do the free. Now, does that diminish the value, the entertainment value? Yeah, a little. But ultimately, it's between that or shutting it down. And again, that's just never the right way uh, to go. I, I miss the movies. I do. I. I have realized that, like, you know, I don't need to go to the movie theater every week, but I am one that, you know, some years I've gone to see 30, 40. I mean, I've seen a lot of movies in the past several years. I've seen 30, 40 movies a year. 2021 could actually be a record-breaking year if they all come out. But we're having a situation where... You know, when Fast and Furious 9 or F9, one of my favorite film franchises ever, you guys know that, when that got delayed a full year, I was like, are you out of your mind? Why? Now, at at that point, we didn't know how long this was going to go. But when they delayed themselves, it was like, you delayed yourself for a full year. What if this stops in June? Now, okay, again, we have a better understanding of it now. uh, But at the same time, now you're having movies that were in mid-late 2021 get delayed till 2022. What's the purpose? Why? You're only hurting 
yourself, this James Bond film, like, yes, I understand Tenet did not do good here, okay? It did actually really well, and that's a, a thing to Jay's point. We handled this very poorly, kind of because we listened to the fear, whereas other countries were just smarter. It's done really well everywhere else. It actually did pretty bad here, but I think it did decent enough. It's also because, you know, that movie had a, ma I mean, it needed to make, what, like $700 million, I think I saw? Like, that's how much it would need to make to make back all its money. That's that's tough. That's a really tough thing to do. It was never, I don't even know if it would have done that normally, okay? So you have a film like that, and that does scare the movie industry, and they say, well, maybe we can't do it. I don't see how James Bond wouldn't make money. I don't see how Wonder Woman doesn't make money if they come out, honestly, right now. If they came out right now, you stack the movies, 30 33%, you know, uh, people in there, you could still make uh, money. The issue is the fear. People are afraid to go, but people have no problem going to the grocery store, to Lowe's, to Home Depot, to all these things, but they're afraid to go to the movies. And again, like I said, I can, uh, you know, Jay, you can uh, kind of chime in here on your thoughts. I... You know, I'm not anti. I'm not like super anti Hollywood. Like I do think there are some good people there, but generally, I actually probably would say I'm I'm anti the Hollywood elite. They're they're very stuck up, right? They know it all. And uh, again, they're sitting there in their you know in their mansions. You have Alan saying how bored or how terrible it is. Remember that early on, how just awful it was being in a like a, a massive mansion during all this. Yeah, cry me a river, right? So all of these people, they're all gonna be fine. They're still making movies. I mean, I've talked about Scream, right? We talked about Scream on this channel. They're filming Scream Five right now, right now. So these movies are still going. They're still, by the way, spending hundreds of millions of dollars on these budgets. Because they're filming Spider-Man. They filmed Uncharted. All of the, uh, you know, Avatar, you know, those small indie films, Avatar 2 and 3. They're filming all these. They're still spending all of this money. But then they're, they're going to delay it like 10 years from now until, you know, when it actually comes out. Movie theaters are not going to last that long. And they're already, by the way, in a really tough spot. The last thing I'll say, I'll give it to Jay and then we'll end this. Last thing I want to say is this. Maybe this will be good at the end. Like, if movie theaters make it, I hope what this does is make it so that projects, because they just shove everything into theaters nowadays, and a lot of stuff is terrible, and a lot of stuff bombs, and they're always given the chance to come back. You know, I use Charlie's Angels as a good example. Elizabeth Banks with the whole, we don't want to see 50 Spider-Man movies, we want to see Charlie's Angels. That movie bombed. She immediately got, like, two other directing gigs. Now, in what other job, if you fail a job massively, are you going to get offered immediately two other massive positions? When does that happen? It doesn't. It only happens, and maybe in the sporting, and you know, sports it happens too, but, you know, this this happens. And so hopefully we don't get a lot of garbage products anymore because there's a lot of a risk involved because these companies are saying, well, the budget can't be that high. We have to go down. We need to use our heads. These directors need to be smarter, get the most out of their money. Or again, we don't, you know, this is a stupid product. Oh, we're going to push, you know, whatever kind of woke stuff or we're going to push this or that. Maybe we can't do that because these films are going to bomb and we can't actually afford it because of what happened. So maybe there's good at the end of this, but I, I think that's uh, probably the end of my two cents. Well, yeah, I think that <clears throat> uh, I do want to point out too what you said about people making their own decisions. I think that that's what's really important here. I think that you should be informed on those decisions. Um, and then make them. I think that you need to look to multiple outlets and things. If you lean one way, um, you know, on whatever you think, I think it's good to get perspective of other people. I've always thought that. Um, and that's why I try to make my decisions based off of common sense and sort of an amalgamation of what everyone thinks and stats and stuff like that. I, like I said, I think it's important you make your own decisions and stay safe. Like I, if you are, um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you what to do, but if you have, you know, pre-existing problems that make you more susceptible to this, here's the sucky thing. You know, you have to then play the common sense advocate uh, to yourself with that. Where is it worth going? Where is it not worth going? Um, but the idea that nobody can go to the movie theater because of the thing going on um, is pretty ridiculous. And I think that these studios are being very selfish in a way. Um, and I'm saying that with all of them. Because the only person really willing to bite the bullet here was was Tenet. It was mm -hmm. Nolan and uh, them releasing Tenet. W you know, they knew that this was supposed to be kind of the thing to get some people back to theaters. They knew that it probably wasn't going to do that great. And they released it because they wanted to push for theaters. That was one of the reasons that movie came out. I think that we need to see more of that going on uh, if you want to get people back there. I mean, I was scrolling through the AMC app, and and it's worth saying AMC is being predicted by some analysts. AMC, one of the biggest theater chains ever, being predicted by some analysts to run out of money in six months. 
That's insane, Alex. I, I worked yeah. there actually at AMC. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> they take they take this stuff very seriously. Like, I'm not saying they're the greatest business of all time. I don't speak for them. There's some stuff they did I don't agree with, um, but they are one of the biggest theater chains out there, and even they're running out of money. Regal is talking about closing locations again. Uh, these, the Hollywood elites, like you said, and the people who aren't being touched by this nearly as much. At some point, if they want that lifestyle for themselves to remain and they want to stay with that wealth and be able to make that money, uh, they need to take a hit somewhere. You know, WB needs to take a hit and throw something in theaters. Uh, MGM needs to take a hit, throw something in theaters. Does it suck? Absolutely. It does. You know, you don't want to release James Bond and make $100 million off James Bond. Obviously, you don't want to do that. But if there's no theater to release it to in a year... What are you going to do that? I think right. that's the big question and the problem here. Um, and I think that not to be so black and white with this, I've always thought that it doesn't make sense that some areas are safe and some areas are not. Um, if they're both being handled the same way with the distancing um, and stuff like that. So to me, the theater enforced social distancing and things like that much more than any grocery store I've been to. I felt safer there um, from what's going on. And I think that you need to look at each place that is out there and say, well, how are they handling this? If I go to the grocery store, um, am I having to be closer to people and touch all these things more than this place? Um, the place that it is, the type of place we're talking about, does not determine the sanitation of it. Um, it depends on who's running it, what the what the rules are. Uh, you could go to a bar that could be more you know, safe than a grocery store. And I think that that's just something that each individual person needs to think about um, and make their own decisions. You know, I, I'm not going to say you have to go to the theater or something. Frankly, there's a lot of movies I see in theaters that I just skip. I don't, I don't go there. I see a movie there and I'm like, Oh, that looks awful. Pass. I'm right. not going there just to support the movie theater. I, I go there for, for fun. Um, so that, that's the other thing too, is there's nothing there right now to save the theaters. And because of that, you have the combination of fear along with the fact that even if I wasn't afraid, what am I going to do? go do? Watch New Mutants again? <laughs> uh, no, nah, I'm good. Am I going to go watch Empire Strikes Back, which is in theaters around me? I could. I own it on Blu-ray. I don't need to. Um, <laughs> that's sort of the problem we're coming down to, Alex, is I think that it's it's a problem, a multifaceted problem with the industry, with the information people are getting, with the information that the Hollywood elite people are saying, uh, and with just being afraid. And I, I think that fear is justified. Um, I just think that it's too bad that this is possibly going to ha uh, cause more problems for this industry and for people who need this to escape. Um, my final thing I do have to say, too, is it could go one of two ways. The theaters could tank completely um somebody could buy it and you know come in buy more and set up new theaters and that could do great or it could just be the death of that form of of thing or it could become more niche um or they could ride it out and then if they do ride it out you have one of two things as well you have the idea of they don't take as much risk on garbage movies um but the problem with that could also be that smaller movies that are really good like unbreakable or split things like that yeah. that people weren't expecting to be great maybe those don't get greenlit now or, or upgrade because they're afraid to take a chance it seems like hollywood learns the wrong lessons <laughs> from every problem yep totally i mean yeah it's an issue and then you i don't want to forecast it because it becomes way too difficult too but you forecast it and it's like Wonder Woman, I doubt, stays on Christmas Day. There's there's really no way I think it does. Then you start going to January, February, and it's like, when do the mo when do they decide? And how do you even decide that, by the way? It's like, oh, okay, well, all these companies that are technically all like against each other because they're all competing, they're all like, okay, well, we'll just put like 12 movies in on Febu in February. The movie theaters will obviously still be alive by then. And, and, and if they're not, they'll open up for us, right? It's very, it's an entitled thing of thinking. They're like, oh, they'll just be there when we're ready to go back. And by the way, we're going, and I don't want to get too political, we're going into the winter, which is flu season. So things are probably going to get really bad, and it may not even be the thing going around the world. There's going to be a lot of, 
again, misinformation, a lot of stuff. This could drag on, honestly, till the middle to end of next year. And then again, like, do you, so does Batman get delayed till 2023? And does Shazam get to 2024? And it's like, at this point, honestly, it's making me not want to, like, Black Widow, I want to see, but honestly, it's just annoying at this point. It's like, just release, just come out. I, I, I get it because they're going to lose money, but I mean, just at this point, because you're going to see the movie, and you're going to say in the back of your head, oh, man, I was supposed to see this five years ago. Like, is that point going to come? And I just feel like that's going to be very annoying. You know, it becomes Duke Nukem forever. Do you know the whole <laughs> yeah. scenario about that? It's supposed to come out on the N64. It finally comes out on the Xbox 360, and no one cares. Right. Yep, it completely bombed. Right, exactly. And I think that'll happen, actually, for a lot of stuff. So we could probably talk about this for an hour. It could be, like, a really nice podcast, which would fit the channel's name. But we'll, st yeah, we'll, but we'll skip that for now. Let us know in the comments below. Guys, did you like a video uh, like this? I don't think we said anything too crazy, just two people speaking our own minds. You're very free to have whatever opinion you want on the channel. No problems there. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of this video. Do you want us to do more things like this? As always, make sure you guys are supporting this channel, subscribing, following me on Twitter, all that stuff. And also, Jay, again, all this stuff will be in the description. Main channel, second channel, Twitter, all of the stuff, Patreon, lots of stuff over there as well. Make sure you guys uh, show your support to Jay. Thank you again, Jay, for uh, joining me on on this pretty fun talk i'd say hey thanks for having me i hope i didn't go so far overboard that a lot of people are going to be mad at you um I, i'm turning my channel private and hiding so it's all <laughs> directed at you from this point forward <laughs> can never match the sony hate and all that and all that kind of stuff so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all on the next video